Hello oh, and welcome back to JS Dev. Today we'll be talking about product of array except for self. So given an integer array, and if we look at example one here, we have one, two, three, four. Return an array such that every element in this array is equal to the product of the element except for itself. So what that means is, let's look at the first element right here. The corresponding result is 24, and we get that by doing 2 times 3 times 4. Now, 12 equals 1 times 3 times 4. 8 is 1 times 2 times 4, and 6 is 1 times 2 times 3. So it's all of the product except for the value itself. Now, it says here we have to write it in O of n. Right? Now, off the top of my head, I could think of an um, o of n squared solution, where you have to iterate through um, twice. For example, here at first one, we'll do 2 times 2 times 4, and then we'll skip out on every single element where we are at, multiplying its um, surroundings. All right. So let's break down this question. I'll show you, say for example, using 1, 2, 3, 4, right? our first um, corresponding value is 24. How do we get that? It's 2 times 3 times 4. And we'll call this the post product, right? It's post of the index of where we are. It's after. So everything after this one right here, 2 times 3 times 4, is our value. When we move on, post of 2 is 3 times 4. And then we'll have a pre-value, a pre-product, which is going to be 1. So 3 times 4 times 1 is 12. If we move on, this post is going to just be 4. And it's pre, 1 times 2. 1 times 2 times 4 is 8. And finally, at the last value, we only need its pre-products, 1 times 2 times 3. Now, let's create this table. Let's start with the pre. So if we're at the first index right here, and there's nothing before it, we'll just use itself as 1. Now, if we look at 2, what's the product of everything that comes before it and itself? It's 2 times 1, which is 2. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 6 is 24, 5 times 24 is 120. There we go. Now we have done our pre-product table, right? We are trying to find um, at every index what is the pre-product of everything that comes before it, right? So here, right, what, what is the product of everything that comes before it in itself? Well, it's 1 times 2 times 3, or it's everything that we've uh, multiplied so far times where we are now. 3 times 2 is 6. Now, what about the post? We have to go from right to left. So we'll create another one, another set, and because there's nothing after 5, we just use itself. And it's 20 because we're doing now 4 times 5. 3 times 20 is 60. 2 times 60 is 120, and now 1 times 120. And we can use these two tables to find, in linear time, the product of every single thing, every single element, except for the element that we are at. And I'll give you an example. So if we were at 3, the product of everything that comes before it, the pre, 1 times 2, is right here in the pre table. And everything that comes afterwards, 4 times 5, is in the post table, right? So what we then get for this index right here is going to be 40 because we had 2 times 20, which gives us 40. And we can keep doing that for every value. We can iterate through. So if we were here at the first one, right? Pre it's itself, we just times 1. 1 times 120. Right now, 2, 2 times 1 times 60, we get 60. At this index, we're looking at the pre. 1 times 2 is 2, so we get 2. And everything that comes after it, the post table, the post table shows 20. 2 times 20, we get 40. Now in the pre table, we have 6. In the post table, we have 5. And so on. And this is our result right here. Okay, but this solution uses two tables, and it outputs another table. What we can do is actually just use constant space we don't need the two tables, and I'll show you how we do this in linear time. So let's redo this again. Now, as we go through the first uh, run-through of our 
input, and we'll be calculating the pre-table. So let's do that. That's the pre-table, similar to how we calculated it before. We start with our first element. If there's nothing before it, we just set it as itself, or one times the first element, which is just itself. Two times one is three times two, four times six, five times 24. Okay, so we've done the pre-table. Now we need to do our post table. We start from the right hand side right here. Okay, so we set the post as five. We're not gonna use it just yet, but you see how this 120 gets replaced with 24? And that is because at this index right here, the last index, we're looking at the multiplication of everything before it, which is 24, right? And there's nothing that comes after five, so it's just one. So it's actually just 24 times one, and we update our answer table to 24. And now post is now five, right? Because when we move to four right here, we need to know what is the multiplication of everything afterwards. We have our pre-table, which is the current table right here, but we're storing our post in a variable. So now let's go to four, and we're curious, okay, What's everything before four? What is the multiplication between everything before four? It's one times two times three, or as our pre-table shows, it is six. And what is everything after four? Well, it's just five. So six times five gives us 30, right? And now we have to update our post table as well to four times five, everything that comes afterwards. And we're doing that for when we move to three. So let's move to three and we ask ourselves, What's the multiplication? What is, we'll check our pre-table. Our pre-table shows two, so two times 20 is going to be 40, right? So now we've updated it to 40, and we have to update our post. What is three times four times five? Well, it is 60. Let's move on. We're at two, check the pre-table. It's one, one times 60 is going to be 60. So we've updated this value to 60, and we need to update our post variable two times three times four times five, or just two times 60, which is 120. And finally, we are at our final value where there's nothing before it, so we just do one. One times 120 is 120. So this is how we solved it in linear time, right? Without using a pre-table and post-table, we just start out by building the pre-table and we update the values in there while keeping a post product variable as we move along. So let me jump into the code. There we go. And let's, let me narrate through. Let me see if I can get the whole thing in here. Okay, so I won't live code this one, but let's just um, walk through this, this, this solution, all right? So we right here at line six, we are instantiating our pre-table, which is also going to be our answer, okay? And then we iterate through the input, right? So starting at index zero, incrementing by one by one by one, okay? Now we're saying that if there's no value, right? If i minus one, which is basically, if we're at the, in, if we're at the very first index, or if we're at an index and there's nothing before it, we know that this is the very first index. And so therefore we can just say, okay, there's nothing before it, let's just set the pre as our very first value, which is going to be zero, okay? And we're done with this. This will only exist one time when we're iterating from left to right. And everything else afterwards is just going to be our pre value, which we had just set, right? Minus one times our nums i. So we're building that pre multiplication table. While we, while we iterate through the first time, we're looking back one value and multiplying that. Um, so this is how we build our pre-table right here. And now at line 14, I just say, okay, let our post multiplication variable be one. And now as I iterate from right to left, setting our i as the last index in this um, nums array, and we're going from right to left. And now we're saying, okay, if we start at the last variable, and there's nothing else after it, what do I do with my pre-table? Well, then actually our pre-table at that index is just going to be the value before it, right? Now, say for example, right here, I'm going to copy and paste that 
our, our example, right? So if we start out here, what is the multiplication? It is, what's the answer to this? It's one times two times three. That's what we want to get. So we've already calculated what one times two times three is in these lines. So all we have to do is look back one index, which is what we're doing right here, which is going to be six, okay? And then we have to update our post product table to that variable, which is actually just four, because then when we move to three, we're gonna be looking at the multiplication of everything after three. So once we moved to our second last variable, which enters into this line 20 else portion, we're going to say, okay, this pre variable right here, or our pre table is going to be, um, now this portion right here is actually for when we get to i equals zero, because there's nothing going, there's nothing gonna be in front of it. It's going to be undefined, so we're going to use one. But if we were at index, um, <coughs> the second last index, it'll be okay. We will actually just go right here. So the pre table, look before it, and then multiply our post. So essentially what we're doing is, if, imagine we're at our second last index and we're looking at pre i minus one, pre i minus one would be two, two times our post would be four. So then it would be, well, it would be one times two times four. So this is just a ternary operator, what we're doing. And when we get to that index equals zero, right, when there's nothing in front of this one right here, we're just going to say, okay, it's going to be one times our post product. And that would actually return our final answer. If I just run the code, you will see it. Let me just submit it. Had a couple of failures here, but yeah, this is the final code. Um, please let me know in the comments if that was clear or not. Um, using the pre and post tables and building out the pre table first and overriding those values as we iterate from right to left. Uh, thank you.